Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. This week's topic is about pre-selection tips. So let's take a look. In this example, you can see that I have a bunch of components, and I also have a bunch of hardware components, like screws and bushings and nuts and washers, etc. I want to go ahead and rotate this arm, and you can see I already have some Revolut joints set up, but when I move the arm, none of the hardware or even the other arm moves with it, and I'd want all of this to move all as like one group. And this is where the rigid group command really comes into play. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, and it says uh, select the components. Well, there's a bunch here, so I'm going to draw a selection window, but you'll notice it's not letting me create a selection window. So I'm clicking and dragging, and it's not creating a selection window. I actually have to manually come in and select each of these pieces of hardware and bushings and this nut, etc. And this bottom part here, I'll say OK. Now we can see that that moves together as a rigid group. However, I missed a bunch of hardware that was kind of buried inside of these parts. So I'd have to be very careful and do a lot of investigation to make sure that I've selected every single component that I want. So this is where today's tip really comes into play. So I'm going to undo, so we're back to no rigid group or anything like that. And instead of running the rigid group command first, I'm going to select my components first. So let's kind of look at it sort of from the top here. And I'm not in any command right now. And I'm just going to click and drag. And now you'll notice that I get this window selection. And what this is going to do is it's going to select anything that's inside this window. So you'll notice it selected the hardware but it also selected a bunch of faces. So here's a bonus tip. If you don't want it to select the faces, under the Select menu, you can go to Selection Priority. And here you can see you can select bodies, faces, edges, or components. So I'm going to say Select Component Priority. And I'll do that exact same window, but this time when I let go, you'll notice that it only selected the components that were inside of that window. And it didn't select all of those faces and fillets and edges. Then if I want to set it back, I'm going to go to my um, selection filters and make sure that I change it back to select all. Because right now it's only going to select components. So I'm going to say select all. Okay, the other bonus tip, um, hopefully you all know about this, is if I drag from left to right, I get a window selection. And it's only going to select anything that's inside that window. But if I drag from right to left, I get a crossing window. And it's going to select anything that's inside that window and anything that that window is touching. So you'll notice there's this red gear here, and it kind of extends through. So if I go like so, it's going to select all of the components and the hardware, and it even selected this red gear because this red gear goes into this part a little bit and was crossed by that crossing window. Okay, so now um, I'm in no command. I want to select a crossing window like so. I also want to make sure I get this hardware down here, but if I were to make that go inside my window, I'm going to get some other components that I don't want selected. So we're going to kind of do this in a two-step process. I'm just going to draw my crossing window like so, and it's going to select all of these components. And then I'm going to hold down my Shift key and draw a window selection around the hardware down here. And we can see that it added that hardware that was inside that window. OK, so I've got everything selected that I want. Now I'll run the rigid group command. 
Uh, it gives me a warning saying that it already has some constraints like these revolutes. That's fine. I'm going to say yes, go ahead and continue. And we can see in here, it says 29 components were selected. Now, there's a couple components that I don't want to be part of the rigid group. So I can control my selection by holding down the control key and selecting the component that I want to remove. And now you can see it went from 29 to 28. I'll do the same thing for this other red part, and now we're down to 27. I'll go ahead and say OK. And let's move one of these arms, and we can see that sure enough, that's all one rigid group. All of the hardware, the upper arm, the bottom arm, they all move together. And I didn't have to manually click every single one. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up and share or repost the video with others in your network. This will help spread the knowledge of Fusion out to the community. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, please reach out to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.